To fix my slap tear without surgery, I needed to strengthen my shoulder, but I couldn't do my normal workouts because I could barely lift my arm past a certain point. In this six part series, I'll share the variables that I manipulated in order to rehab my slap tear. This video is all about range of motion and why it's so important to keep working out even if the exercises you usually do cause pain. For the complete strategy, grab the slap tear rehab blueprint. It's free, just click or tap the screen to get it. Range of motion refers to how much a joint moves during an exercise. And when we're talking about a slap tear, we want to look at the shoulder range of motion. In the early days of my slap tear, I couldn't lift my arm past here and I couldn't bring it out to the side at all. So doing things like chest presses, shoulder presses, or pull-ups was completely out of the question. Most people think that they should avoid exercise if it causes pain after a shoulder injury, but this is a terrible idea. Abstaining from strength training when you have a slap tear means that you lose muscle mass, not just in your shoulder where you need it, but through your whole body. This is a disaster because then when you return to training, you're now dealing with much more than the aftermath of a slap tear. And the only way to get back to doing the sports you love is to make the shoulder strong enough that the slap tear isn't an issue. This isn't my opinion. This strategy was taught to me by friends who are the head sports physical therapists for two of Australia's elite football teams, the Newcastle Knights and the GWS Giants. And believe me, those guys have one goal when it comes to dealing with a slap tear. Get the athlete back in the game as quick as possible without surgery. Here's how I was able to continue training so I rehabbed my slap tear and kept building muscle at the same time. The first thing I did was train the pain-free range with shoulder flexion and extension. So shoulder flexion is when you bring your arm up like this, and shoulder extension is when you bring your arm back like that. At first, I couldn't do a shoulder press, but I could do a dumbbell floor press. And the same goes for pull-ups or lat pull-downs. So I did a ring row instead. And by strengthening the shoulder with the elbow kept close to the body, I was able to work out without pain. In this early stage, abducting my arm like this was way too painful. So I couldn't do any exercises where my arms were in this position. And when you train through a range of motion that triggers a pain response, you continually remind the nervous system to lock down the shoulder joint to prevent further injury. So it's crucial that you train the pain-free range to reinforce to the nervous system that strength training is okay. With this approach, I was able to increase my pain-free range significantly within 28 days. This is why in my slap tear rehab programs, we gradually increase the range of motion through the program phases to reflect your adaptation and continued progress. You might ask, why would they prescribe basic and ineffective exercises when I just outlined an approach that's much more effective and used by sports physical therapists for elite athletes? Well, that's because at most physical therapy clinics, they are dealing with the general population who aren't as dedicated to their training as you and I are, and who are less likely to follow a comprehensive approach. To understand the full strategy that I use to rehabilitate slap tears in both shoulders without surgery, grab the Slap Tear Rehab Blueprint. It's free. Just click or tap the screen to get it. In the next video, I'll talk about how to manipulate intensity to keep training in spite of your slap tear. I'll see you in that next video.